Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from bitemout.com, bitemoutlive.com, and P.L. Combs Asian Art. And today is May 7th, 2021, and this is our Friday video, our weekly look back at last week's uh, auction results on the web, what's coming up, what's happening on other auctions, what's happening on the global member pages, and uh, what will be coming up in this week's newsletter um, uh, as far as items on eBay and Katowiki and that sort of thing. There's a lot going on right now. Uh, the auction market certainly is getting busy. Spring is here, so there's, a, there's always a bounce in auctions at this time of the year, and it seems like uh, the world here is all getting back to normal. I had my second shot a week or so ago, and I'm feeling fine. Uh, knock me out for a day or two, but I'm back. And uh, here we are. A couple of things I wanted to go over was uh, thank you uh, for uh, some suggestions this week uh, on things that we should be, they'd like to see on the Bitamount uh, live page. Uh, uh, the listings have been uh, coming in okay. Everything's doing fine. And I just want to remind everybody, the faster it fills up with content, the more content that's in there, the more the site will get out there. Uh, because it, the site is designed to be uh, self-optimizing so that the more material that gets put on the site, the faster it will grow. All right. Somebody asked me about that this week, and that's what it really is, is that the content, like on most websites, is determined by bloggers and people who put things in. This site is set up to, 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 to emphasize to the search engines, the more items that are on here, the more the site gets picked up. And that's how, that's how it works on all selling sites. And uh, it's, it's no different here. We have tweaked it, and we've been doing a lot of SEO stuff on here this week, adding some things, doing some stuff with Google Analytics. It's coming along fine, all right? So if you have things you want to put on, put them on. Get them on there. And uh, get, get this thing, uh, just keep growing and growing. All right. Thank you. Now, uh, let's see what else is going on here. Uh, Oh, uh, uh, last week's uh, newsletter, we'll get to that in a few minutes. There was a lot of stuff on there. Things did pretty well, but I wanted to get over here to the global member pages to point out a couple of things in, in a few minutes. And I wanted to point out that uh, Christie's has a couple of sales coming up, and some of you might have missed it. It's this sale here, Collector Live and Collector Online. Now, these are not Asian-specific sales. They're selling all kinds of sort of fine household um, uh, decorative objects, glassware, silverware, lacquer and so forth but some Asian things are in there and if you if you're if you're especially if you're in London uh, you want to check these out don't overlook the small the the uh, general sales that these any auction house has they don't have to be specially sales for Asian art or for Japanese art per se uh, they often put very nice things in their uh, just their regular auctions and it's not just Christie Sotheby's bottoms and all the big guys a lot of auction houses do that as many of you know all right but a couple of things I wanted to point out that caught my eye that I thought were very, very pretty. First was this pair of Ormolu covered uh, uh, mounted uh, uh, Femi Ver uh, vases. Uh, these are quite nice and these are big. Um, as you know, most vases in this shape that we see on the market generally are around 12 to 14 inches tall. That's sort of the standard size for these, especially in the late Qing period. Um, these are big. They're 19 inches tall. They have a, a four to six thousand pound estimate, which is very reasonable with these wonderful uh, early 20th century, late 19th century mounts on them. Absolutely great. And this is in the uh, collector online sale. This is not a, a, a live auction where you can attend. This is one where you bid online just like you do on any other website. So if that those look nice to you, check them out. They're, they're quite elegant. I love the, the pattern on them is what caught my eye. I just thought the, uh, the, the decoration on them was so unusual with these uh, uh, balls of flowers uh, strolling off of vines. Uh, all the way around, and you've seen this pattern up here before. This is sort of like the pattern you see on some Kangxi pieces, and then you have the standard, uh, you know, striped uh, lower section and so forth. But a very nice uh, pair of vases with ormolu mounts, and they're big. They're presentation style. So if you're looking for something pretty flashy, you might want to look at those. The other, th the other thing they have uh, here, and these are on the uh, online sale as well. A pair of uh, uh, blue and uh, gilt uh, Chinese uh, uh, porcelains with uh, uh, ormolu mounts on them, 19th to 20th century. Also, three to five thousand pounds, and these are fairly good size. They're not little; they're a foot tall each, so they'd be quite handsome in the right room with your French furniture or, or, or high-end English furniture. It would look terrific. 
And then also they have this, this very nice um, uh, Edo period, uh, they call them scattered fans uh, boxes. When they're spread around, they see the fan decoration all over it. And this looks like a very nice example like this. You know, the metal banding looks good. The, the corners aren't banged up, uh, which often happens on old lacquer boxes and so forth. It looks pretty good. But, you know, always get a condition report, check it out, make sure there isn't something on there they didn't photograph. And uh, something interesting, if you look at the description, there's a typo in the description. Um, they call it fans Edo. Uh, period. Um, it should be a, a fans comma Edo period. They left out the comma. So I saw that. I said, what the heck is that? Uh, that's what it is. It's just a typo in the catalog. All right. So anyway, the, this is a beautiful box. Any, no matter what, Edo period, probably early 19th century, uh, five to 8,000 pounds. If you're a Japanese lacquer collector, you want to check that one out. It's a nice one. It's got chrysanthemums on it, all kinds of stuff. It's very pretty. Very piece, pretty piece. Also, Sotheby's has their uh, sale coming up, um, and this is their London sale. This is their live auction that starts on May 12th. And uh, this is not a high, high-end sale. They have some expensive things in here, as they always do. They've got a number of very nice um, uh, tang-glazed um, uh, uh, horses and uh, Bactrian camels, which are quite nice. And they're up there, 80 to 120,000 pounds. But there's a lot of stuff in here that's in, in the very, what I, I, could call, I call the buyable range, under 5000 under $10,000, even under 1000 I think, in a few places. Um, and some nice, nice pieces. Uh, this beautiful uh, Long Quan Celadon fish dish, early Ming, three to 5000 There's this very, very nice um, market period Shundi uh, yellow dish, fifteen to 25,000 uh, pounds. This caught my eye, though, is something really quite fabulous. This is really quite something. This is a, a, about a 12-inch tall Ming Wuhai, uh, late Ming period, incense burner. Done like a, uh, uh, like a porcelain plant stand and then with a foo lion on top. It's really quite wonderful. Um, uh, beautifully done, fully reticulated, nice underglaze blue, nice overglaze enamels. And the food lines looks to be in pretty good shape. Call and check it out and make sure it is. It looks like some, there might be some um, uh, fritting off of the uh, glaze, but I don't think it's been damaged. And the estimate is ten to 15,000 uh, uh, pounds, but that's a very rare thing. And if you look around, I don't think you're going to find many other examples. They did do some other pieces like this, but not necessarily this specific form. Um, and they, they didn't, um, uh, down here, cite, uh, let's see, a civil shape is uh, missing the cover, was sold at Christie's uh, in 2016, and there's uh, one in the Aidametsu collection. So it's a rare bird. You might be able to pick it up. It's a nice looking thing. All right, and also this, one of these crescent-shaped um, uh, Ming export uh, porcelains. This is obviously Middle Eastern influence with this shape, uh, but very, very nicely done, 15th century uh, uh, unusual form uh, and again adopted from Middle Eastern metalworks and so forth estimated at 25 to 35,000 or 30,000 pounds uh, fifth they call it 15 to 16th century I think it's probably more likely 15th century but that's just me um, very very nice regardless and how big is this eight inches long it's about right they're all they're all sort of in that same same size beautiful example though and uh, what else? Oh, yeah, this. This is like other kind of stuff they have on here, like a, a lot of nine dishes. And I think the estimate for all nine is uh, eight to twelve hundred dollars. So, if you know, if you're in a position to get them, you don't have to hassle around with a lot of shipping. Uh, this is the kind of thing that if you're a dealer, you can make money with, obviously, if you can buy it within the estimate, uh, because uh, the, all three of these, all four of the plates along the back are, are worth, you know, pre pretty quickly uh, three to five hundred dollars a piece and, and it's sold individually. And the smaller pieces are worth two to three hundred dollars a piece sold individually anyway. And then you have the two bowls that are probably worth five or six hundred bucks. So uh, there's a profit in it if you could buy them for the uh, eight to twelve hundred pound uh, estimate. All right. Um, there's definitely a profit in that if you're a dealer. All right. And if you're a collector, buy one, buy it if you see one in there you want, and then sell off the rest. You'll probably get all your money back plus a plop plus a profit. Put it on the Bitamount Live site. Go ahead. All right. And then over here, um, the export porcelain sale is coming on. Um, uh, this starts on the, on the 12th and runs through the 19th. This is an online only sale. Again, um, uh, so you can do it, you can bid on it just like you do uh, from any other auction uh, online. There's a lot of interesting stuff on here. There's a, a big assortment of uh, very fine grisaille decorated pieces. There's some very, very fine armorial pieces. And there's also lots of big platters like this, a big Canton 18th century platter. 
modest estimates, hundred to hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars. Uh, another one for four to six hundred. This is a big one, as I recall. It's like eighteen inches. Uh, and then you have the big planters, tea caddies, and whatnot. All everything. There's everything here. This sale, uh, Sotheby's put together, has everything in every something in every price range. So regardless of your collecting level or your buying level, you can find things uh, that you'll like. I'm sure. All right. There's some very rare pieces in here as well. But it goes on and on and on. There's a lovely terrain in here, $1,000 to $1,500. Uh, very beautifully done with the, with the crown knob finial. And these, that, of course, is reticulated. Here's the, here's the body of the piece. Very nice. Nice piece. And uh, estimated fairly modestly, 1000 to 1500 pounds. All right. But there's a couple of rare things in here that's caught my eye. And not with massive estimates. Just very unusual. Very, very pretty. And one of them is this. This is Canton enamel on copper uh, Famille Rose, but with a beautiful pink ground. Uh, it looks almost like raspberries, uh, but vibrantly painted. If you, if you, it's hard to you look at the piece. The color of the of the ground is so bright, you don't realize how great the decoration is. The decoration on this this plate is particularly well done. Um, it has minimal amounts of wear down here at the bottom. Not a big deal. But the uh, enameling and the decoration around the outside are quite excellent. It's estimated eight to twelve hundred pound. If you're a Chinese uh, uh, enamel collector, it's a good thing. I think the mark on the bottom, yeah, is Chinlung mark. It's not a Chinlung one. It's 19th century, mid 19th century probably, and uh, it's uh, seven inches in diameter. But very unusual, very very unusual ground color cover color. And then over here to this is fantastic Femi Ver uh, wall cistern or wall fountain they call them. Now, of fish on it. And this is a famous pattern uh, with, the, with, the, with, with, with fish, crabs, and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, aqu aquatic life growing up here. And then you have the mask uh, mount where the, where the spout comes out and so forth. And it goes right up to the top. And the uh, dolphin uh, tails and so forth running up over the back of it with the giant clamshell on top and multicolors. This is a nice one. Very, very nice. I think it's estimated at five to 7,000 pounds. Uh, quite unusual. Very, very unusual example. Um, and uh, quite viable. All right. And then lastly of this is this, of course, if you're an armorial collector, uh, you know what this is. This is the Arms of Holland. The, 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 the National uh, uh, Armorial Crest of the, of, of, of the Netherlands. A beautiful example, very vibrant, very strong in gold, and it's Kangxi period. Very, very nice. All right, and there it is. And this is estimated at uh, 22 to 26,000 pounds. It's, a, it's not inexpensive, but it's a rare pattern, and I like, I like the lotus tips uh, with alternating scenes going around the outside. All right, there is a bit of dirt up in here, and I'd ask about that. In case you, you didn't notice it, um, up here in this area, there seems to be some dirting or stain. And I don't know if that is, is dirt or if it was something was done. I would ask about that on a condition report because it doesn't appear down here. And I almost wonder if, if, if either, either it's dirt or maybe it had been in a fire. I don't know. I don't know. It might be an interesting story. Find out why. Find out if they can tell you why that's like that. It's interesting. All right, now over to uh, uh, li uh, live auctioneers, the stuff that was on the global member pages this week uh, that are coming up. One of them is this, is this really nice Yuan Lo um, uh, silver serving tray uh, with the relief work dragons on it. This is a beautiful one with the tray. You don't often see uh, Chinese silver with trays. Usually it's just the tea set, as you've seen so many times on eBay and other places. This one is the complete set. And you can, of course, look up the, uh, the, the maker over on the uh, bit amount reference section uh, in the silver book to see who this guy is. But it's got 12 days to go. You have plenty of time. And this is being done at Heritage Auctions. It's a really nice uh, thing. Uh, what does it weigh? Uh, let's see. here. It's heavy as I'll get out. The teapot weighs 114 troy ounces. Uh, it weighs 114 ounces total, rather. And the set comprises a teapot, creamer, covered sugar, and the tray. Four pieces. Very nice. And then on to this. This caught my eye for one reason. This pattern is most often seen, it's a Famille Rose 18th century plate, is most often seen on dinner plates, you know, in six to nine inch plates, not generally uh, often seen on big plates. This is a 15 inch charger, which makes it very, very unusual. And it's very, very pretty. And I love the flower pots come radiating off. It's all flower pots, perfect for spring. Absolutely fabulous. And uh, different flowers in each one, and so on and so forth. Lovely, lovely work. And uh, there's a good, there's a nice picture of the back. Oh, there's a detailed shot of it. The uh, blue enamels and all that. Very nice, deep, dark shading. 
but this is a really unusual plate. Here's the back of it, just how it should look. And uh, this is Alex Cooper's having this in a sale coming up in about a, about a week. And uh, if you're a Chinese export collector, uh, uh, like unusual patterns, that's a big one. And, and go, go try to go find that pattern on another big charger. See how long it takes you. I think it's going to be a while. And um, the estimate is fine. Seven to nine hundred dollars. Absolutely. Probably going to bring more than that. But we'll see. We'll see. I suspect it'll bring twelve to eighteen hundred. But it's a beautiful plate. And then this, this is coming up in a day. This is at uh, Fortune Auction Galleries. Uh, this is just a really sweet Famil Rose. Unfortunately, they didn't take it in high resolution, so it blurs out when you enlarge it. But anyway, a very, very nice 19th century Famil Rose uh, dish. It's got one bid at 100 bucks. I love their estimates, $200 to $10,000. Um, I think they do that with all their lots. I don't think they bother with estimates. Um, and there's a picture of the back of it, pretty standard uh, 19th century back, but very, very pretty plate. Really is, really, really pretty. Um, there's a the detail of it. Nice figures in the garden setting. I like the balustrade in yellow and red. Very nice. And uh, then hopping over here to this. Something I wanted to mention. Um, uh, Millet Brothers uh, down in uh, New Jersey. Uh, it's a good auction house. If you've never done business with them, I, I like them a great deal. I've done, I've done some stuff with them over the years. They've always been very nice. He has three paintings in the sale coming up. This is contemporary Chinese art. If you don't know anything about contemporary Chinese art, it's a very interesting. They're doing some absolutely great things. And this is one by uh, uh, Kao uh, uh, Ji Gang. And he is a living artist. He was born in 1955. Uh, he has gotten a considerable amount of no, uh, 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 fame. He's coming up in it, so to speak. He's, he's uh, uh, about 66 years old. He teaches in Beijing. He teaches art. And he did this series on the Great Wall. There's this one, this one, which I think is striking, and that one, a detail of the wall. And uh, he's very sensitively painted. Uh, wonderful Chinese artist. If you look him up on live auctioneers and places, you'll see that some of his paintings bring a lot of money. They bring forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars. From what I, I did a quick look up on him because I've seen his work before, but I didn't know what he brought. And uh, these are reasonably estimated, two to three thousand dollars. There's three of them. I, it appears to me they came from the same owner. Um, I think in the, in, the, in in New York or somewhere, and they had bought them from probably from a show. But uh, uh, it's a series he did on the Great Wall. There's his signature. Um, there's, this is Great Wall 1, and the others, I think, are Great Wall 2 and 3. So he did sort of samples of the Great Wall. I think these are absolutely striking. And they're uh, 24 by 29 inches um, uh, um, unframed with, the, with the, just the canvas itself. So these are big paintings. These are nice big paintings. And uh, you can frame them or not frame them. They look great, actually, unframed. But um, I, I would probably frame them because that's the way I am. But anyway, those are nice looking pictures. But don't be surprised if they jump up to six, eight, ten thousand or more. Uh, but if you take a shot at them, take a shot at them. All right. Now over here to this. This was something interesting. These were in the news. These were on the global member page. All of those are on the global member pages now. Um, these were on the global pages. Uh, this was an auction down in I think it was Litchfield, right? Yeah, Litchfield Auctions in Litchfield, Connecticut. And um, I saw these, and I said, gee, those, that looks like a nice little grouping. And it's something odd I noticed. He, he didn't use the word Chinese. They didn't use the word Chinese in any of the Chinese lots. And as a result, they didn't get, I don't think they got spotted by very many people. And uh, this lot with the, with the two punch balls and this very nifty Famille Rose um, uh, uh, terrine with boar's heads on the end. It's got a few nicks out of it. It's a nice 18th century terrine. It's got, the, again, the reticulated crown cover and all that. Somebody bought all three lots, all three of them, for four, a single bid of $400. Leave a bid, all right? Um, I don't know why, but so if somebody churches, searches for Chinese export, this wasn't going to turn up. And I don't know why they excluded the word Chinese, because it's, uh, it's all Chinese. They came out of an estate, uh, in a Manhattan estate. And I think somebody got a great buy on these. And I think somebody got a very good buy on this, too. Same thing, 18th century armorial tankard and dishes. Could be any type of armorial. Um, they didn't use the word Chinese in there, so it didn't turn up in searches. And it got just two bids of sold for $425 against an estimate of eight to 1200 which seemed reasonable. And uh, this is very nice reticulated uh, under tray, this nice uh, shaped uh, uh, bell form uh, tankard, a cup and matching saucer, and then this little bidet over here on the side. All right, which is sort of a curiosity if you're a collector. And, uh, you know, all of that for $425 is a fabulous buy. That's a steal. And uh, I think it's probably because he didn't use the word Chinese. 
people search use search terms on, on on live auctioneers and websites to look for things. And even if you just put in Chinese, you end up with a, with with a mountain of stuff. And if you put in Chinese export, it's going to confuse this kind of lot. Is going to confuse their their algorithm. And uh, you're probably not going to see it until you scroll through all you know 50 pages to come back on that. And that's that's why I think these went very very reasonably. And I uh, let's see one internet bid. And one um, competing bid, which could have been from Invaluable or from somebody on the floor on a telephone or something. At any rate, uh, somebody got a great, great buy. And these sold uh, just today, as a matter of fact. This was at Coronari's over in Belgium. This very attractive pair of Kangxi Amari style dishes. I just like these. I thought they were very, very pretty, nicely done. I like the very intense decoration in the center. And then these pointed leaf tips heading into the center and then the outer cavetto the outer the outer the outer rim decorated with lots of gilding uh, beautifully done really looked nice and they didn't seem to be damaged in any way they looked to be in very fine condition and somebody bought the pair for $362 US which I think was an excellent excellent buy the canary sales over now it, it was going on early this morning when I got up uh, but boy what a, what a nice looking pair of plates for under 400 bucks and uh, let's see what happened over here on the newsletter page. This is the, the newsletter page we do where we handpick stuff and put it on our website and share it with our, our uh, free, it's, it's free, our uh, subscribers. And uh, one of the pieces that uh, just closed, we looked at this last week. It was up to uh, around 10,000, 9,500, as I recall, last week. And uh, it was a nice dragon robe. We thought it would jump up probably another 1,000, and it did. It sold for $11,100, which is Right about where these, these good robes have been ending up lately, uh, if they're in nice condition. And that one looked to be in very nice condition, so it makes a big difference. And then this, this beautiful relief work 18th century teapot. I love this with a Mari palette, uh, nicely, nicely decorated. Uh, I don't see any, I didn't see any damage or issues with it. I love the stem handle on top and this, these applied uh, porcelain bits here serving as leaves. Really attractive. And uh, of course, it's a uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, what is it for? Thirteen hundred and thirteen dollars, which isn't bad. This was a seller down in um, uh, Connecticut, in Cheshire, Connecticut, that puts things up here occasionally. It's a core arts uh, LLC, and uh, I don't know the people, but I've seen them sell things before. They have nice things, and uh, so we kind of keep an eye on them. And uh, this was a very, very nice teapot and a fairly rare one. Uh, beautiful example. And then over here to this, this wonderful Famille Rose uh, scene of the people fording the river being carried back to the house and a man in the river and this beautiful willow tree um, sweeping over onto it. There's a good detail shot here. Nicely done face, nicely done horse. He's being very intrepid, pushing through in the water. Uh, I like that. And uh, here's the man uh, helping a friend, carrying him on his back across the river. And uh, there is a blister that the uh, seller pointed out in the enameling, which was right there, which I thought was pretty clever of him. And uh, here's a picture of the back of it, okay? And uh, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a late 18th, early 19th century dish. It sold for $459, but unusual, very graphic, n uh, no border decoration. It's just an overall like a painting, like a canvas, a landscape scene. And I thought that was very, very nice. And then over here, the punch ball that we talked about when it went up, we talked, mentioned it last week that it was closing, and it did close. Uh, nice, nice Yongshen period punch bowl, delicately, quietly decorated with white enamels, um, nice overglazed blue decoration, and the gilding here and here and here, everywhere you can see it, it looked like it was in nice condition. There's a good shot of the interior, beautifully done, and it did pretty well at the end. It did what we sort of thought it would bring, about $1,833 which is fine. It was sort of lingering around in the hundreds and suddenly it started to, started to climb. And uh, there it goes, all right? And then for this, a very nice pair. Now this is sort of a stock pattern pair of 18th century export plates. Uh, you've seen the pattern before, the, the elder in the, in the courtyard with the two women and this nice background landscape scene. But they're always charming when it's a pair. Pairs are nice to have because they hang well together and, and they, they create a nice, a nice area. You can hang them vertically or horizontally. Now, obviously, and the pair went for $487, which I thought was very reasonable. It was perfectly fine. 
And then over to this, the 18th century underglazed blue incense burner. Nice example, done in the Kangxi style. I'm not certain that it was Kangxi. It looks more just sort of Chin Lung period to me, but very nicely potted. Uh, the decoration looked very solid on it, looked good. The rim was in good shape, nice thick rim. And uh, somebody picked it up for $716, which I think was pretty good. This was from the Cellar Migalari over in London. He had a good lot of things up last week, and I think all of it did quite well. Um, but he gets nice things. And then over here is another rose mandarin dish with mandarin figures in the convetto, and each one of them is inscribed. You see the script in here? It's easy to miss. Uh, always check these plates. When you see the, these upper end first half of the 19th century rose mandarin dishes, always check to see if they haven't tucked a little script in here and there around certain aspects of the plate because they often did that on the better examples. Here's a picture of the back of it. It's exactly how it should look. It's got an old break right there running across it and all that. But because of the script and the quality of the work, it still brought $284 after having been broken. And sort of a lesson on these. Um, in perfect shape, I suspect this would have brought probably triple that because it's beautifully painted. It's, it's, it's in the top, you know, the top 10%, 5% of uh, Rose Mandarin. Uh, export uh, porcelains and, uh, done. Oh, and this, the pair of paintings we talked about a couple of times. I just thought they were charming. They were going very reasonably. If you like to buy Chinese paintings, or, 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 and, and they, you know, they can be very expensive. Not everybody can afford to buy the real expensive ones. But these were charming, authentic, and nice. And I said last week, if you get it from under 200 bucks, you got to steal. Uh, well, nobody did, unfortunately. But they still went for a fair price. All right, they went for $350 or $180 a piece framed, which can't beat that. Beautiful looking pair of pictures, and these were fairly good size. Remember, they were 20 or so inches tall. Very nice, very tasteful, and uh, you know, you don't have to spend a fortune on Chinese paintings to get attractive ones um, uh, to, to have in your home and to live with. All right, I highly recommend them because there will come a day where you won't be able to touch these things. These things will be, you know, like all all art will eventually, you know, they'll start to rise and some point some of these these domestic Chinese paintings are going to be, you know, these these will be selling for, you know, for this selling for 2 or 3,000 dollars and not that far off. All right. And then over here to this was this very nice uh, later 18th century radiating panel lotus dish. I thought this was absolutely nice. I don't know why. It went for 100 bucks. I think somebody got a great buy. I thought this was quite nice. The colors were good and strong. Uh, the paint decoration was interesting, the way they executed it. And uh, uh, just, a, I think it was $109.50 somebody paid for it. Not bad. And then over here to this, the, uh, the uh, uh, Nanking uh, Chinese export terrine. Uh, uh, Nanking was made in a huge range of qualities. The finest quality examples have these... Um, We've talked about them before, but I'll talk about it again in case you forgot. All right, these arrowhead borders down here around the edges. Maybe they have a better picture of it. Let me see if they do. Uh, maybe they don't. They should. They should always include those. All right, maybe it does. Yeah, there, you can see them better here. These these arrow, sharp arrow borders around here and these very fine lattices around the bottom. And then, of course, these very elegant um, uh, wo uh, 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 strap handles. Those are beautiful handles, much better. Sometimes it's just a simple, you know, one overlap. These, are, these go over, under, over, under, and out, and then they have their own attachments at the ends. Beautiful, beautiful quality. Here's a picture of the interior of it. Here's this side of it. Just uh, looks terrific. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Is there a picture of the base on these anywhere? No, that's under the, that's the bottom of the lid. Yeah, there you go. There's the foot rim. Uh, nice looking, nice looking terrain. Very, very attractive. And uh, ended up selling for, uh, how much? $475 with 18 bids. And this is, uh, should have zig should have zagged. Uh, what else did they say anything about the family? Came out of a home in Philadelphia. Uh, actually, it dates older than he thinks. He said it dated from 18, 1810 to 1820. Yeah, it dates closer to about 1800. All right, late 19th, late 18th, early, early, early 19th century at the latest. All right, now on to this. This is something that didn't sell, and I threw this in there, and somebody asked me, you know, what's the deal here? It's a 20th pair of 20th century watercolors. Um, these are not 20th century watercolors. These are 19th century watercolors. The, the, the seller's a little off, and I thought they were a very attractive package. And uh, if, you, if you blow them up, these are on pith. These are Chinese pith paintings, uh, but these are not 20th century pith paintings. 
All right, those those are the shading, the overall shading, especially of the greens and the blues, and the way the reds are done and all that. It's a pair of them. They're framed, and I love the red frames. I think these are cool. Um, they have a make an offer on here. They're asking six hundred for the for the for both of them. And uh, I, I, you know, if if you like, if you want to own a nice pair of pith watercolors, uh, make an offer on these. Uh, these are quite nice. Offer them five hundred. See if you'll take them. Those are very very nice, and the frame on them is really whimsical. It's great. Red mat with a with a with like a hemp hemp mat, uh, red uh, fillet around the inside with a hemp mat, and then they're just simply painted wood red and frame. I like the frames a lot, and I think those are terrific. And uh, for five hundred bucks, very very nice. And then over selling over on Catawiki this week was this this very nice molded uh, work Kangxi uh, platter. Uh, this wasn't a huge one; it was only about eight or so inches, but very nice quality, top quality. And um, with the, I love the monkeys on the branches and all that. It's funny. I was offered a pair of these from a, a guy out in the Midwest, Minnesota or someplace. He was a dealer. Got them out of a house. And he had these were big, the ones he had, like 18 or 19 inches, and they'd been busted. I was so disappointed. Oh, both of them. Anyway, that's where it goes. Um, and then on to this, the Amari porcelain. These are Kengshi Amari, uh, beautifully done. And I think somebody got a great buy. These are about eight inches in diameter each, but very much in the Japanese taste. Very Japanese in flavor here. Um, and uh, there's the detailed decoration on it, and so forth. And uh, somebody picked up the pair on Katowiki for 360 euros, which I think was a wonderful buy. Yeah, because I, I like I like Chinese Amari that looks like Japanese Amari, and I like Japanese Amari that looks like Chinese stuff. It, it, ma it makes it more interesting. That was nice. And now over to uh, just a few things that are coming up. One of the things I wanted to mention was the um, uh, 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 Shanghai community uh, back in the day had uh, their own militia because uh, after the Opium War ended and so forth, the British and the Americans were given their own zone um, the Shanghai uh, 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 territory, so to speak, um, and uh, they they had trophies and things because they had their own military. They worked with the local government. It's not like Hong Kong where it was completely under the control of the British. These were foreigners living in Shanghai, but they had this sort of autonomous zone, and um, they had they provided their own security and they they worked with the with the Chinese military. And it went on for about eight, seventy or eighty years. It ended uh, uh, during the, at the start of World War II and Japan invaded, but. Uh, up until then, they had this very interesting Shanghai community of Westerners, and they gave out these trophies. And this one was given in the 1890s. And you notice the Western-style guns, the, the Remington repeating rifle. Um, they're used to hold up the uh, cup and so forth. And uh, there is a picture of the mark on it uh, to this, but the guy's picture was so out of focus, I couldn't read it. Otherwise, I wanted to find out. I am assuming it was probably a Shanghai silversmith. Uh, there were some very good Shanghai silversmiths. But anyway, this is a very interesting cup. And it's got the name of the person to whom it was given for his service uh, to protecting the community uh, down here. Uh, presented uh, to uh, P.T.W. Uh, uh, Walker, whoever he was, 1890. And it was presented by Captain B. Brendan. Uh, just an interesting thing, and I suspect if you did some digging, you could find out all about them if you end up owning it. Uh, it's up to $1,083. I suspect it'll double these, 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 these gift pieces and historic pieces tied to specific organization and events in China at this time are, are quite highly collectible today. But that's a, if you have, don't own any of these and you want to own something that's, that's real interesting to do with Chinese history and its interactions with the West following the Opium War, this is a nifty thing to buy. And it's a good size, too. It's not overwhelmingly big. It's a, what, how tall was this thing? Six inches? Yeah, six inches tall. So you could have it, just a nice little thing. Uh, absolutely lovely. All right, now over here to this is this big 18th century uh, gilt. I don't know, the, the photograph, the lighting here is a bit tough. Maybe it didn't know how to set it up. But at any rate, there's a better one. Uh, nice um, uh, powder deep blue with gilding uh, 18th century plate. Uh, this is a very nice example. Here's a picture of the, the, the foot rim on it. It has a chip out of it right there. I don't care. It doesn't mean anything. But there it is. The, the decoration on it, though, was quite outstanding really really is and i think it's about a foot in diameter it's up to 413 dollars it closes next friday a week from today so you want to check it out and it is uh a foot wide okay i thought it was 11 inches it's 12 inches wide uh but a very nice example and a big one um uh for these uh very very handsome and, and uh, i think in the right room with beautiful lighting it would look great 
and then over here to this. This is a, if you like Chinese sort of material culture fun things. I like this. This is not terribly old. This is a Republic period teapot um, with a, with a little wire handles. It's missing one of them, but it's got this dandy little homemade, handmade cozy that somebody very carefully put together for this. Uh, did all the stitching and all this, and then they lined it with whatever they had around. I think so forth. But I love this. I love this little tea caddy. Here's the teapot. It's just a regular little teapot. It's got an old mark on the bottom. Um, but the decoration is clearly 20th century work, but it doesn't matter because it's a nifty package um, with this caddy. So you put it in there and it keeps it warm and uh, you know have it on your table in the morning. And it's just one of those little luxuries. Just a nice thing to have the, the bag. The teapot without the bag, I wouldn't be interested. I'd be more interested in the bag without the teapot actually. Uh, but I, I like the, I love the combination. Very interesting. And then these are coming up. These are very nice. These are big, 15, 16 inches tall, late 19th century moon flasks, a pair of moon flasks, which makes them very, very desirable. They had been previously lapped. There is a drill hole in the bottom, but these are big ones, big. And, um, and the, the ones we've seen in the past that are large, just singles of this size, tend to bring uh, around, uh, uh, in, uh, even with a hole in the bottom, they can bring 12 to 1500 bucks a piece. Um, so if, if you're looking for a big pair of handsome moon flasks to put on a mantle or in a bookcase around your home or in an entryway, you might want to look at these. They're only up to $224, and they have two days to go, so you might get a bargain on them. You might get a bargain. And then on to these. These are not old, old, old. These are Republic. They are very much done in the export style, the ones that were made during the 18th century. But the truth is the quality and the detail of these are quite exceptional. Uh, if you look at the face, the way this is done, the eyes, the nose, the lips, these are superbly well made. They are beautifully made. They are marked on the bottom. Here's the grass cloth bottom. They have the uh, pottery mark or whoever it was that did it. Uh, Republic period figures. They're about 16 inches tall. Quite nice, quite beautifully done. And they look to be in very good condition from top to bottom. All right, the black hair looks good. I don't see any chips out of the black enamel in the hair, which does happen fairly often. And uh, the rest of them looks fine, look fine to me, and uh, very nice expressions. Very serious, but, but very kind. And uh, I like those a lot. And that's about it for the week. There's a lot of stuff coming up. We, we're going to be updating the page in a little bit here today. And um, we'll update the uh, global member pages tomorrow. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to us over here yet on, on uh, YouTube, please do. If you enjoy the videos, subscribe, like, share, and subscribe, as everybody says. I, don't, I never quite think about what all that means. But uh, if you like it, give us, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. Uh, visit us at bitamount.com. The links are in, down below here. And uh, the Bitamount Live site, see what's popped up on there that people are selling this week. And uh, those of you out there selling, thank you for doing so. Uh, we had a few more things sell this week, which was nice. And um, keep adding things. Keep adding things to that site. Uh, the bigger it gets, the faster it's going to spread. All right. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.